Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. What we're going to be doing today is going to be doing entrelock in the square. This is when an entrelock blanket is perfectly square where the blocks build on each other in a complete circle. So you can see that we have yellow in the middle and then we go around and then around and around. This makes for a perfectly square afghan. We have four video tutorials for this kind of concept. So this is afghan in the square. We also have afghan in a rectangle. So for example, say you have a bedspread and you don't wish to be square because a, a, a square a blanket like this will not fit on a twin size. I have figured out all the math. So that's afghan in a rectangle. Also some people like to have their, their rows going all the way across to being the same instead of going around in a circle. So they like to go back and forth. So we have afghan the rows and then for those that would like to finish off their afghans perfectly I have afghan um, the entrelac borders just like so to be able to fill it in with half triangles so that you have that there because most people don't like that jagged border. So that's going to be coming up next so but today we're going to be doing the entrelac in the square. Now you may think I'm kind of weird but that's okay. I'll allow you to have that for me today. So the entrelac if you were ever in a class with me in real life I always describe entrelac as five pin bowling. <laughs> These are pins. <laughs> so if you didn't think I was weird already this is my sad attempt for pins. This is the bowling alley. You're standing here about to get a strike. Yahoo! So what we have with the entrelac is that it's based on the number of seven. So let me write seven. Okay, so seven is your magic number. It's like a Mickey Mouse. I got seven at one time with the flies. So what I want you to think about this is that you have five pins here. Okay, and you have a gutter and a gutter. Okay, and in the front of the line this is where you're standing. There will be a gutter and a gutter. Okay, so what happens here is that there's a magic number of seven. So you have gutter which is one, the five pinch which is five and then the gutter on the other side which then equals your seven. So basically you have gutters, you have five pins and a gutter. Okay, that's how I get my seven. So in the horizontal direction that's what it is. So in the vertical you have a gutter, five pins and a gutter. So how does that relate? So what we're going to be doing is that this is the diagram that I'm working on and we do one square at a time. And if you can keep in mind the bowling alley concept it makes it really easy to follow. So for example say we want to build another block based on my gutter system right here and we want to build another block on top like this. So what you have to keep in mind is that the first time that when we go to start off we're, we're going to be chaining seven because we're just starting. But every time after this we're only going to be changing chaining six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Why is that? The reason for that is a five pin bowling if this is a gutter okay the other gutter must be on the other side. Okay so you have a gutter is already there so you have your six right here. Okay, so you have your five pins plus your gutter. So that gives you a total of six. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so every time you're going to finish a block basically the gutter is already established on whatever block that you're um, attaching to. So if I attach a block here and I come in okay this gutter is part of this one. So then you'll have your five pins okay and a gutter. So you'll be chaining six for that. So if you can understand that particular concept it's actually a lot easier. My whole thing when I'm going to look at these things and how they attach together is that basically I, I think about five pin bowling. So what happens here if, if you really carefully look at it here is that we have our first block right in the middle and you can see one, two, three, four and five. So there's your five pins. Your gutter is the join and your gutter is the join. So how many rows up do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. Here's your gutter of the join and here's your gutter of the join. Does that make sense? So here's the thing. Even though we're using the concept of seven which is a typical for entrelac you can do any size that you wish. So for example say you wanted to do um, um, say twelve. I'm just I'm pulling out a number. So what's gonna happen is that you'll have ten pins a gutter and a gutter to equal your twelve. So when you go to do the number of rows there will be ten rows up and then there will be ten of these things going across before you hit your gutters on both sides. So as long as you always keep it in square by thinking about it as a bowling alley it makes a lot of sense. Well at least it does to me. So I guess let's get started on the diagram and I'll show you that in just a moment. So now that I've done my bowling thing for you, you may think I'm weird but it does work when you visualize it is that we're going to start off 
just here and we're going to be chaining across and we chain our seven. Okay, because this is the very first block. So we have to at least establish the gutters on both sides and then come all the way across and then keep going back and forth until we have the uh, number five. The number five is the one, one of the most trickiest things that you need to make sure that you stop before you go any further from when you get to five and then we're going and these things are slip stitches. So we slip stitch ourselves um, going all the way back and then we start the next block going around. We're gonna talk about the magic L and the magic L needs to be established every time that you don't see an L and we'll cover that in just a moment. Today I'm gonna be using Bernat roving yarn. Today as we've talked about in the Tunisian series is that you have to look at the ball band. It's recommending a size six and a half millimeter or sorry six and a half millimeter crochet hook size K but with Tunisian we always have to increase our sizes at least two sizes. I'm using a 10 millimeter size N for this particular yarn today and it does a really nice uh, concept um, and it turns out really great. So you have to increase your hook size so don't follow the ball band for when you're doing your Tunisian. So without further ado let's uh, begin and we're just going to start off with a slip knot and let's begin. So we're going to just insert our afghan hook in and um, you need to have a little bit of distance especially with the thicker yarns. For thinner yarns uh, such as this other example I can actually do this with the regular crochet hook without it being a Tunisian hook because I can get all of that onto my hook without it bothering me at all. So let's begin. We're going to chain seven. Remember that the one on the hook does not uh, does not count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So let's establish the first one. We're going to come second chain from the hook, and we're just going to turn it around and get the back hump of that second one in, and pull the yarn through. So yarn over, pull through, and just leave it on your hook. Slide it down your shaft just like so, so that the thickness is matching. So if you leave it down here, the thickness will not be consistent. So let's go into the next one, pulling it through and slide just to get that tension there. Okay, so we continue to do that all the way across. Now if I chain seven, how many should there be? That's right, there should be seven. And in the bowling alley theory is that there will be five pins plus two gutters, which gives you a total of seven just like this. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I've run out of chain. So the two are my gutters and the middle are the bowling, uh, is the pins itself. So let's move up to the next row. So moving up just on this block only you're going to do this concept. So only on this block you're going to yarn over and pull through the first loop only and then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two and two and two all the way back. Okay, so that was row number one. Okay, so you can kind of see what's going on here. You see your five pins in the middle. You see your gutters on both sides. So let's begin our next rows. We just, it's a simple stitch. So we just insert into the vertical thing. Just, it's one strand. Insert into the vertical, pull through and we do that all the way across. And how many should there be by the time you get all the way across? That's right, there should be seven. So on the very final one here, you go into a ch the chain, okay, and there should be two strings, pull through, okay, and now you have your seven back on your hook. So there's your five pins in the middle with two gutters. So then yarn over, pull through one only, and then yarn over and pull through two, and do that all the way back. Okay. So the next one, let's begin again. So we're just gonna insert into the first. So you don't see me chaining or anything. You just insert into the first one. It's a simple stitch and you keep doing that all the way across again. Okay and then remember the outside it's a chain. So there will be two strings. If you go into one string you'll have this unsightly gap on the edge of your work. So make sure you go into the two and then yarn over pull through one. And we keep doing this until we get to the level of five. And five is when you have to pay attention the most. Five is when I screw up the most when I'm doing this on my own. So let's insert. And the only reason why I do that is that I need to verify the count each and every time. So if you have um, 
for example if you do a, a larger one that requires maybe 10 rows or, or even more you, I like to physically count just to make sure I'm, I'm not uh, out of balance and remember come into the edge one. So there's my seven again, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. So you'll start to see it curling up on you, don't worry about it, no big deal. Okay, so how many rows do I see here? I have one, two, three, and this is the fourth. Okay, so I got fourth so far, so let's insert into the next. And I can tell that it's almost the fourth too because this is almost square coming into the edge. Okay, yarn over pull through one only and then continue. Yarn over pulling it through two. So I think I might have my fifth in here. Okay, so it's almost square. So what you can see here is that you see one, two, see I'm counting these grains. So one, two, three, four. This is the fifth. Now the fifth does not look done does it? You can see right through it. So what you have to do for this one on the fifth is that you have to start the slip stitching to fasten off. Okay, we don't physically fasten off if you don't wanna change colors but if in this case because we are the center square we will want to fasten off because I wanna change my colors. So we insert into the first one and yarn over and pull through that one plus the other loop. It's kinda like a bind off and what you need to pay attention to the most do not be tight with this. It's easy to have uh, to make these really tight. You will regret it afterward because you have to go back into these when you go to join other stuff to it in the future. And so if you're tight now you will be fighting it later. And I can't say that enough. So you come right into the final. Okay, you see the two strings pull through and through and that is your first middle block done. Okay, so the way that I had you do it is that you can see that there's beautiful stitching on all four sides of this to be able to attach. Okay, so what I want you to do at this point is that I want you to fasten off this particular item. Okay, so I just cut it and I'm just gonna yarn over and just pull it through and I'm deal with my loose ends afterward. And so that's what it looks like at this point. So this is the center. So I'm gonna show you the next rotation going all the way around. When moving on to other blocks we need to look for the L. So right now we've finished off with the, the yellow block right here and we're going to start off with the next one. The problem is is that we do not see an L when we go to start with and I'll be explaining that to you in a moment. So what we have to do is that when we go to start we're going to chain six and we're gonna come up. Okay, and what we're going to do is that we're gonna work our way back to this block each and every time and join it. So by chaining six you're actually getting the L shape that you need. Okay, this does not need to be done every time we do a block. Only when an L doesn't exist. So for example, say we're coming along um, on the middles. So where it doesn't, where we don't need to do it is when we come across the middle is that we're going to be slip stitching here and the L is actually right here as we go. Okay, so we have to look for that each and every time and hopefully that will make sense in just a moment. But let me start off with the next color and I'm gonna start off with the slip knot. I prefer that for myself. It just is good. So I can start off in any corner. It doesn't matter because I know this is completely square. Okay, so I'm going to start off right in this corner here. No rhyme or reason. I just can because I just picked it. So I'm just gonna put both strands over and pull through. Okay, so that does not count as any one any, any one at all. So I want to chain six. So in reason why we're doing the six, remember I explained the bowling alley. So this is the one gutter on this block here and so if I do five plus one for the other gutter it's only six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So as I just explained earlier we have the L shape. So the L is existing. Do you see it? It's kind of backwards. Okay, so it's L or it could be a V in your opinion. It doesn't matter but either way you need to look for that. So if you do not have the L shape to work with you have to create it by chaining six. Okay, and um, in this uh, particular um, revolution we have to create it each and every block but going forward we only create it when it's on the corners. To begin the next one is just like we did as if this block does not exist. We come in second chain from the hook 
and we yarn over and pull through. Okay, and then come into the next one and yarn over and pull through. So in the bowling alley what we have here is that we're collecting all the pins right now. We're right in the middle. So we should have, if we chain six, we should have uh, six of these loops on this before we attach it to the block. So there's six. So the next one is right where we attached it. And that is your seven. Okay? So here's your, so the gutter is already, is attached to this one. Here's your gutter this side. Here's your five pins. So yarning over and pulling it through two. So this time we do not yarn over and pull through one loop to start and then two and two and two. We just immediately yarn over and pull through two. Okay? So let's see how we're coming across. So let's start into the next one. Again, and it's a simple stitch. That's all this is coming all the way across. Okay, so you have your six on here. Okay, so there's the gutter out. There's your five pins. So your next one is the next row up in the block. Okay, you just loop around it and then just yarn over and pull through two all the way back. So once you get this, the first block, it's actually easier just to follow the rest of them. So let's go to the next one. So we're just simple stitching again back. So because we're doing the simple stitch, um, I told you you can just change the sizes. They are end up being square to each other. So it's okay to change your lengths of your chain and to make bigger squares if you wish. So there's your six on there. The seventh is the block. So we, we moved up again another row in the block. And then yarning over pulling it through two. Okay, coming back. Okay, there's your six. The next one is the next one higher in the block. So I wanna just verify my count so far. So I'm gonna open this up and just look at it. Okay, so I have, and I'm just counting the grains that you can see. So one, two, three, this is the fourth. So remember I only want five in there. Because the tops and the bottoms count as the gutter, which gives you the total number of seven. Okay, there's my six. I'm attaching to the block, pulling it through. Okay, so I want to count again. So one, two, three, four. This is the five, the five. Remember before it looks the same. It looks like it's got a gapping space. So this time we want to do a bind off. So we're just gonna insert, pulling it through and through. Again, do not make that a tight bind off. Just make it nice and loose because you'll be playing with that later in your particular project. Okay, so we're not done yet. We still have to bind off right to the next block. So we come into the next one on the block. As you can see, follow it up and just wrap and going around and pull through. So now you can see that this block is completely attached to the next one and we're ready for the next round. Okay, so the next block to make this is actually just up here. The next one is out here and the next one is down like a cross. So to begin the next, do you see an L? No, you don't. So you have to create it. So every time you do not see an L to work with, you have to create it by chaining of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And again, it's the same concept, second chain from the hook. We wanna start collecting all your stitches again and working your way back. Now the biggest deal that you have to worry about, especially in this beginning round, is that your project does not turn backwards on you. We're only working with the front sides for this particular project. So we have to make sure that this doesn't twist. And honestly, it's gonna be hard not to figure out that it's not twisting because it's, it looks completely different from one side to another. See, you don't see any of the vertical strands like you do here. Okay, so we have our six in and the seventh, okay, is the block. Okay, so it's the, the white block there. And so then we yarn over and pull through two. And we do that all the way back. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna turn my project. So the grains in this one here went, uh, appear to be vertical or horizontal. These ones here will appear to be going vertical. So you'll notice that the grains go in a different direction depending on what side of the project you're working on. And side not meaning front or back, just meaning on how it's turned. So I'm just collecting all my stitches going back and again coming into the block here I move up to the next row to wrap and then pulling it through two. Do you get that? So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just going to speed ahead and cause I think that you should understand the concept by now but we're not quite done. We still have to take you through another round because then that's when it all comes together um, for a complete understanding on, on how it works in between the corners. Cause right now we're creating the invisible L but once you uh, move up into the, the rounds of this the L is actually there for most of it other than the corners and I wanna show you how to identify that. Okay, so it's a very easy concept. It's a lot easier than I expected. I've seen uh, and read other tutorial patterns that are really tough, uh, really complicated but so I try to simplify it with the bowling alley theory because I'm very visual and that's what I need to learn. So I'm just naturally wanting to go all the way back. I'm looking for the height of the block on the middle white one to kind of give me an idea where I am in the project. So I think I'm on four because I'm almost done the white block. So one, two, three, four. Actually this is the fifth. So one, two, three, four. This is fifth. So I was further ahead than I thought. So I'm gonna do the bind off. Again, don't do a lot of tension. Okay, and then the next one is right into the, the final bind off is right into the next block. Okay, so there it, it, there it goes. So we begin again and just simply chain six because there is no L to work with. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and then simply second chain from the hook. So continue to do this all the way around and I'm gonna meet you back up at the, the final of this particular round of coming around. So I'm gonna do this block and this one and then I'll show you what's gonna happen because I, I have to explain something before we go on. So I'm just finishing up the last one before I'm done this particular round of the squares. Now this is, I'm actually filming this because I really want you to see, uh, see the point of why you cannot go any further on this particular round. And it's not because there's another square already in the way. And the reason for it is that, and I'm just gonna bind off like I did before. So the reason for it is that right now, I'm just gonna pull some slack, is that I told you that we need to look for an invisible L. Do you see an L here? It's right here, okay? So you can see that the L's are in shape. So right now because we're, the, where we have finished is right in the center of an L, we can, we have to fasten off. We don't have a choice because we can't start um, right where we are for the next round, okay? So regardless of it being a different color or anything, we physically cannot start here, okay? Because if we go to try to chain up any stitches you can't because you've already got uh, basically you can see that you've already got the upper motion and then you're gonna work your way across. So you're physically in the middle so just fasten off. Now I have actually tried in the past where I slip stitch myself across the line in order to begin the next one. You will always see it. I don't care how good you are, you're always gonna see it. So you have to uh, be very conscious of that. So just fasten off, save yourself the aggravation and get your next color ready because we're about to go around. And next time when we go to start, so the blocks that are gonna join up here, there is no L so we're gonna have to create it. When we're in the middle, the L is already there. Okay, there's gonna be no uh, L here because it's an outside and then there's an L there. So it actually becomes, if you can physically see that, it's just a lot easier. So without further ado, let's move on to your next round. So where do we start in the next one? Well, it's, it's either or. Either way you have to do all this, all the blocks anyway, but are you gonna start off by doing it so that you already have the L or are you gonna do it uh, with, with having to create the L? Either way it doesn't matter. So just for uh, speeding you up in tutorial reasons, I'm gonna start where there's already an L. And how we do that is that we're going to start off with a slip knot. 
So we're gonna come in, insert it into the hook here and what we're going to do is that we're just gonna come into the very corner of the block. Okay, so just look at it here right into the very corner and just insert your hook in. Now if you bound off too tight it would be harder to get that hook in but I was kind of generous with that. So I just wanna fasten on. So just gonna pull through and so that's the first one. So remember the bowling alley technique. This would be a gutter. There should be five pins and then the next block should be this, the other gutter which is number seven. So let's uh, begin. We're just gonna insert into this block okay into each stitch coming across. Yarn over and pull and collect. And you do that all the way across the block. So this is just like you were to do it as if you were going across on the chain. Okay and Okay, so we've gone all the way across the top of the block. You can see the five pins that are there and then we need to come to the joining block on the other side. So right, so look at it here. So you're here. This is part of this block. You need to go into this block here. Yarn over and pull through. So now we should have our two gutters and our five pins. You see that? Total seven. So yarn over and pull through two for all the way back. Okay, so let's begin again. So just like you did before, you just, it's just a simple stitch, Tunisian simple stitch coming across. In abbreviations, it's called TSS. If you're ever looking for that Tunisian simple stitch, coming all the way across, again moving up the block like you have already in the past. So this is basically filling in that, that space. So I'm just going back again. So I don't bother to count the, the rows. I physically count it when I think I have enough. My biggest thing um, when I start, first started doing entrelac is that I was always creating one too many rows across. So I've gotten better just to visualize it and then physically count it and then just double check. So I'm coming back across again. I wouldn't say, I would say that the, the bigger yarn and the hook will make your project grow faster. It doesn't always look great in the thinner yarns but if you're looking um, for a relatively quick afghan, I don't mind these things and it looks really amazing. So I wanna count, so one, two, three, and this is four so this must be the fifth that I'm about to start. Okay and coming across to the next block. So this must be number five. You can see it's almost close to the other size anyway. So that helps you give an indication. So one, two, three, four, five and just counting the grains up and then just do a bind off again. Don't be hard on yourself with making it more difficult. So we filled in the, uh, the block when the, the L shape was there. But now we're ready for the next block but there is no L. So oh remember that we have to bind off to the next block before we restart. So let's begin again. So you do not see an L shape right now. You just see a flat line. So we have to create that. So chaining a six. One, two, three, four, five and six. And this is what you already know. Just second chain from the hook. Start collecting going back. Okay. You should have a total of seven which includes the block that you're attaching to. Okay, there's your five. This is one gutter and then here's your six which is the block. Okay and then just keep doing that all the way. So I'm gonna just uh, get through this block and then I'll meet you back up and start you on the, on the next block which is right down in here which is you can see the L is already there. So a few moments ago I left you and I wanted to finish this block off camera which I did and I'm just binding off now. So I'm making my way all the way down. I've got my five in there. And I'm making myself and remember when we bind off all the way we go into the next block as well. So right into the block. So right now at this point is that I'm looking at it. Do we see an L? Yes we do. We see it right here. 
So only, we only need to create the chain when we cannot see an L in the shape. So for example right now we have the very center point. So all these ones in the middle uh, between the corners all have the L's there. It doesn't matter what size of afghan that you're on. That each one in the middle will have that. So you just kind of like diamond, uh, do a diamond shape all the way across basically. So we're going to start off and we're just gonna start collecting the next, the next set. Okay, so we're just going right into the block that already exists. Okay, and um, I wanna make sure that I'm getting my seven. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm just collecting so that I get my seven on there. Sometimes you gotta count. Just, it is what it is. So three, four, and five. Okay, and then I wanna do it to the join. Right there. So there is my seven. Okay. Yarn over and pull through two. So these ones I like doing better than doing the chaining of six. It's either way it's, it's no big deal. It's just a personal preference. So you just do it the same concept just filling it in doing your rows of five or five rows. Coming all the way across and just joining it to the next section. So when I'm done this uh, particular one here, I'm going to be at the top here. Again, it, there's no, there's not gonna be an L, so I gotta create it and then I'll be back down into the middles section. So hopefully you understand that uh, it becomes really easy. And um, at the end of this particular round, it's just like what you did before when we did the, the, the color is that we get back to the center and we, when we finish off, we're going to be at the point that will be in the middle of the invisible L again and because of that we have to fasten off and restart. So you can either choose the same color and just fasten on to any, uh, any of the particular points that you want to. You can either start off with an L or just create your own. It doesn't matter um, or you can change colors. Either way do not slip stitch it to get yourself reset. It just will be very obvious within your work. So to reiterate one more time, so I just finished this last block. We're going to start the next. I don't see an L, so I need to create it by chaining a six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And so you simply just keep rotating around and around and around and you'll end up with the perfect square as you go and it does the most amazing look when you go to uh, finish these. You can see that it just looks absolutely amazing once you get it going and you can do the cutest little uh, baby afghans with this uh, particular concept as well. I've done a beautiful throw for my uh, couch as well. So that's just something that you can consider for yourself. So it does an amazing look. Color transitional yarn is really quite delicious with this and that's it. So we're gonna have another video coming up uh, where I'm gonna show you how to do the borders and to fill it in because most people don't like the jagged edge um, like sawtooth kind of look. They prefer it to be filled in and that's coming up in a future tutorial. So here's a completed example what I have. This is actually called the entrelock in the rectangle where you can see that I've created a panel that is not square by starting it off differently in the center in order to make it not square. And it's uh, it's actually pretty easy when you can think about it. So till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. We'll see ya. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Today's tutorial is all about making entrelock borders. It is such a simple concept it is not even funny. So basically I've just finished a tutorial here and this is the entrelock in the square and I did this off camera and you can see that all the edges want to roll in and it's not very desirable as far as I'm concerned. You can see the back I haven't trimmed off the edges at all. Um, I can do that off camera at another time. But really what I want to concentrate is what do I need to do in order to get this to settle down so it sits flat. Most people uh, when they request on the crochet crowd they really want their borders to be always a straight line. Um, I'm not sure if it's a phobia or if it's just a personal preference. I'm not really sure. But this does not look attract attractive to me either. So I want to finish it off. So I'm gonna show you how to fill in the, the half triangles in the top sections just like so. And then the outside this is a corner. So you can kind of see that it comes across and then comes diagonally and then back down the other side. So we're gonna cover that concept right now. So let's begin the same concept and remember on chalk we have to use a much larger hook than the recommendation on the size of the yarn ball and if you've been watching the Tunisian series you know that this is already a tutorial already created. So I'm just gonna create a slip knot to begin and I'm gonna insert my afghan hook. 
and now it doesn't matter where I start on the border. I can start in the middle of a section. I can start on the edge but I'd recommend probably just starting off where the invisible L is on the one side. Okay so this is a very corner. You can always just uh, single crochet that at the end to make it a lot easier for yourself. But what we want to do is that we want to start the entrelock process again but this time we want to um, make it into half triangles. How we do that is that we're gonna come into the edge of one of the corners. So you can choose any co corner that you wish and then just take both strands and just wrap it around and bring it through to join. Okay. So I'm just gonna, I'm just taking my time. I wanna get both stragglers so I can cut that nicely afterward and not worry about it falling out. So I wanna make my way across the invisible L like we've explained before. So I'm just gonna start collecting. So this is one and I want my bowling alley. So <laughs> and if you've been watching other tutorials on that you'll know what I'm explaining on that when it comes to the entrelac. So we have my five pins right here. This is my gutter here. So the joining one is the next block. So there is my seven on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two and I'm gonna take my time. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two yarn over and pull through two. And just remember that this is the, the straggler plus that one wrapped. It's not four, it's only three. So yarn over and pull through all three to finish. Okay, so we've been in the other stuff we've been yarning over and pulling through two. This time is yarn over and pull through the final three. Just like this. So now what we want to do is that we want to be conscientious of where all the strands are, are picking up. So what we want to do is that we want to yarn over and we wanna skip this first one and go immediately into the second one over and pick up for a simple stitch. And we do that all the way across again. So we've just skipped over the first one. So there should only be five on here before we join it to the next and now there's only six. Okay, so the bowling alley is now gone <laughs> we've gotten rid of it so now we're gonna yarn over and pull through two, two, two. Now there's three left. We're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, so let's begin the next one. We're gonna skip over the first one, go to the second over for a simple stitch and this is making a half triangle. So now there's four plus then we go to the joining block which is now your five. Yarn over, pull through two, two, and now here's three left so pull through all three. Okay, start again skipping over to the second one. Okay, and collecting. Okay, yarn over pull through two. Now you only have three left so yarn over and pull through all three and go to the final. So just um, we're skipping the first one, second one over and attaching block. Now you only have three on here, yarn over and pull through all three. And to fasten off you just come right into the very next one on the block and just fasten off. So just do a slip stitch like this. Okay, so let's uh, begin. I'm gonna show you the next one more before I continue and then we're gonna end up hitting around a corner anyway. So to, to begin again we just look down we see the L is in there. Okay, so we just start collecting again. And how many should we collect? A total of seven loops. So the bowling alley is coming back right in the very beginning. Okay, so there's your five pins. Here's the gutter. Here's the joining. So here's the other gutter. So yarn over, pull through two, 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 and two until you see three left. Yarn over, pull through all three. We skip the first one, go to the second and start simple stitching back. Okay, and go to the next block. So instead of the seven this time, it should only be six. Yarn over, pull through two, two, and two until you get three left. Yarn over, pull through all three. Skip in the first one, go to the second. Okay, and then adjoining block. So this time there's only gonna be five. So yarn over, pull through two, two. Now there's only three left. Pull through all three. Second one over again. You're gonna need to know this concept in the future. There's other uh, entrelocks that are um, showing this kind of concept as well. So yarn over and go into the last one. 
there's three, pull through and then come and just go to the next one just like that. So when you're on the outside corners like this, um, this is an actual corner corner. So all I just do is that I just um, single crochet myself into these ones on the outside. I don't do any fancy footwork other than that. And then I make my way to the next corner where the invisible L starts again. And what I wanna do is I wanna count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I wanna go over one more so that I have a total of seven loops on my hook. So I'm gonna just single crochet this last one and then I can start again. So just immediately start picking up your loops. So one, so this one you don't have, the, with the entrelac borders you don't need to create the invisible L. You're just using what is already on your, your project. So there is six and the joining is seven. Yarn over, pull through two. Keep doing that all the way back until you get three left. Okay, second one over. Okay, and then join it to the next block. Pull through two, 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 Okay, second one over again. Isn't that hard? <laughs> Not really. It's actually really easy. It does a really nice uh, looking border too, which I really appreciate. Okay, so you got three left on your hook. Okay, skipping the first one. Okay, three left. Skipping the first one. There you go. Once you get all your three in. And just begin again. So that's how you go all the way around and so you can basically see that we've transitioned. I'm just gonna pull out my hook. So you can see that I've transitioned from these really rocky looking border to a border where the actual project will sit down more properly with you with that. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of Your Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see you.